they believe that freedom to think as you will and to speak as you think are means indispensable to the discovery and spread of political truth that without free speech and assembly discussion would be futile that with them discussion affords ordinarily adequate protection against the dissemination of noxious doctrine that the path of safety lies in the opportunity to discuss freely supposed grievances and proposed remedies and that the fitting remedy for all evil counsels is good ones believing in the power of reason as applied through public discussion they eschewed silence coerced by law the argument of force in its worst form recognizing the occasional tyrannies of governing majorities they amended the constitution so that free speech and assembly should be guaranteed fear of serious injury cannot alone justify suppression of free speech and assembly men feared witches and burnt women it is the function of speech to free men from the bondage of irrational fears to justify suppression of free speech there must be reasonable ground to fear that serious evil will result if free speech is practiced there must be reasonable ground to believe the danger apprehended is, is, is imminent there must be reasonable ground to believe that the evil to be prevented is a serious one those who won our independence by revolution were not cowards they did not fear political change they did not exalt order at the cost of liberty to courageous self reliant men with confidence in the power of free and fearless reasoning applied through the processes of popular government no danger flowing from speech can be deemed clear and present unless the incidence of the evil is apprehended